CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Remember when you believed that the kiss of a princess turned a frog into a prince? That was long ago when you believed in magic. You grew older and uh, you harbored perhaps a belief in luck and that luck could be manipulated. Later you amended this to read chance. Then you began to speak of problem solving and the belief in magic was relegated to the past. But even as the magnetic pull of childhood resists all our efforts to grow up, so does the secret desire to believe that the lovely princess will transform the ugly frog into a handsome prince. With a kiss, I can know what I want to know. I can know what I want to know. I can feel what I want to feel. I can feel what I want to to feel. I can be what I want to be. I can be what I want to be. It's happening. Our mystery drama, The Magus was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The title of our story is The Magus. A magus is a magician, an enchanter, a conjurer, one who practices the black art. With all its fascination, its allure, magic has always been looked upon with suspicion, mistrusted as much as it was revered. Our drama starts in the kitchen of an old house belonging to one Adrian Storm. Adrian Storm is a magus. Ellie, you spend altogether too much time with him. I get my work done, Mother. Well, what do you two do up there in his room? Talk. Just talk. That's all. <laughs> um, is he, uh, going to keep that big mirror in his room? Why not? It's his. Well, what does he do? Look at himself all the time? Mother, I don't know what he does. Uh, listen, Ellie. There are men... <sighs> well, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I guess I do. There are men who take to servant girls like yourself. Mother, you are a servant girl. You are the maid in this house, and I'm the cook. He's the master here, and we are the servants, and don't you ever forget it. Adrian doesn't think of me that way. You call him Adrian? He asked me to. When did he ask you to? Uh, the day I took the mirror up to his room. For a whole month, you've been calling him by his first name? He was so sweet to me that day. He felt awful that I had to carry that big mirror upstairs all by myself. I said I'd help you. Now, if you would have waited, Larry would have done it. For that matter, why didn't Mr. Storm do it himself if he was so concerned about you doing it? I wanted to do it. He appreciated it. He kissed my hand. Kissed my hand. First one and the other. He was crying. Ellie. Uh, Ellie, those... those people who come to see him, the ones that come here at night, who are they? I don't know. What, you, you've you met them, haven't you? Not really. I just set up the room for them. Well, what do you mean by set up? Draw the curtains, light the candles, put the records out, and the cassettes, stuff like that. What else? That's all. Then I leave. But doesn't he ever ask you to, uh, to stay? He always does. But he doesn't ever insist. And you never have. No. And you never will. I... Ellie, promise me you never will. I... I can't promise.
promised, Mother. Those people are coming here again tonight, aren't they? Yes. Merciful heaven, Ellie. Ellie, they could be witches, those people. I don't think so, Mother. Ellie! That's Mr. Storm. Don't go. I have to. Well, Larry, Larry McCabe is coming up the path. I, I, I can see him. Ellie! Oh, wait, wait and say hello to Larry. I have to see what he wants. Uh, is that you, Larry? It's me, Mrs. Long. Well, come on in. Well, I can't. Would you open the door, please? What on earth? Oh. Oh. I got my arm oh. full. <laughs> well, 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 I'll say. Here, come on, give me the cat. Oh, here. Oh, uh, set the groceries down over there. Right, yeah. Oh, where did you find the fist, Oh, under the hedge. I know you don't like to have them outside. Oh, Mr. Storm would have a fit. Well, it's awful hard to keep a tomcat indoors all the time. I know it goes against nature. You, uh, you want me to unpack the groceries oh, well, for you? If, you? if you've got the time. Is, uh, is Ellie around? She's upstairs. With him. Oh. Uh, how are you doing at the supermarket, Larry? Are they treating you okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, pretty good, actually. See, I may not be making deliveries much longer. I'll be working at the checkout counter, I think. Oh, that, that's marvelous. Larry, L- Larry, would you do me a favor? Ask Ellie out again. I- I- I'll tell her. I'll tell her about your promotion. Really? You, you think she would? Oh, she's got to. She's got to see what a really wonderful person you are. Not like, well, not like some people I know. Not so far from where we're standing. Adrian, you wanted something. Close, close the door a bit, Ellie. Come over here. I have a little present for you. Really? What is it? Something very simple. What? It's a watch. Oh, I don't think that I Just should... Just a cheap watch, my dear. Of no importance. It's... It's what you do with the watch that's important. Do you know what you do with the watch? Tell the time? Is that what you mean? Is that all you can think of to do with the watch? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Sorry. No, 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 no. There now, there now. It's all right. I am going to show you what to do with the watch. Now, let's look at it together. You see? nice, clean, white face it has, and the black numbers, and the, and the precise little black hands, the long one and the short one. Hmm? You see them? Yes. Now, I want you to look at the minute hand, the long one. Look closely. Are you looking closely? Yes. Now, without taking your eyes from it, repeat. My name is Ellie Long. My name is Ellie Long. Keep looking at the minute hand. Don't look up. Don't look away. Now say, my name is Ellie Long, and I am here right now. Go on. Say it. My name is Ellie Long. And I'm here right now. Here. Right now. Here. Right now. Again. My name is Ellie Long. And I am here right now. Again. And again. And again. My name is Ellie Long. And I am here right now. My name is Ellie Long. Don't look up. Oh, it's all right, my dear. You'll, you'll soon get the hang of it. Will I? Oh, of course. Uh, don't you want to know the purpose of this exercise? Oh, yes. Ah. It's a little trick I got from Gurdjieff. George believed in self-awareness, in going through life fully awake, not with the self submerged the way most people do. He believed in being alive. Fully and completely alive. Oh, so do I. So do I. <laughs> and do you think you are fully alive? I know I'm not. 
Should I see who's at the door? Uh, probably your mother. Larry! Oh, hi, hi, Ellie. Uh, your, your mother asked me to bring the cat up. Uh, Mephisto. Is that my Mephisto? I found him outside in the backyard under the hedge. Oh, well, bring him in here. I'll take him. Thanks very much, young man. No, oh, bad Mephisto. Bad, bad cat. Uh, Ellie, uh, your mother said... Uh, <clears throat> I, I was talking to your mother, and she... Uh, Thank you, Larry, for the cat. Uh, yeah, see, at, the, at the store, I, I think they're going to promote me. That's nice. And, and I wondered, would, would I'm you... I'm busy uh, right now, Larry. You know, would you consider the Please possibility of... the door, of, please. Uh, There's a draft coming through. Uh, I'm sorry, Larry, really. Who's the young man? Oh, that's just Larry. He delivers the groceries. Oh. Well, then we don't have to think any more about him. Tell me, will you be here tonight? For the... Uh, when the people... You mean when they... Yes. That is what I mean. Will you join us? Well, I'll let everybody in and I'll, I'll get everything ready up here. That's what you want me to do, isn't it? You won't stay for our little convocation. Hmm? You, you, you'd find it very interesting. My mother says... Yes. Your mother says what? She says you're all witches. What? A coven of witches. Witches. Oh, no. Witches. You're not? Your mother is a simple-minded peasant, my dear. Well, she only said you might be. You think we're interested in spells and incantations? Oh, no, my dear. No, 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 no. We are delving into the mysteries of time and space. We are seeking power over them both. Long, and I am here right now. Is that it? <gasps> that is just the beginning. You've barely started. Would you like to see how far you can advance, my dear? By the power of your concentration, by the power of your will. Going down the path. Ah, Larry. The young man who brought back my cat. Now, would you like to see Larry jump two feet up in the air and scream out loud as though he were in pain? Hmm? Would you like to see that? Stand there. about magic? Who would not thrill to possess such power? Well, not I, for one. For I am no longer young and believing, I'm sorry to say. I have long since turned skeptical, not to say cynical. I think I may be missing a lot of fun. I shall be back shortly with Act Two. <laughs> Adrian Storm. Her daughter, Ellie, is the maid of all work. 
As potential suitor for Ellie, Mrs. Long favors Larry, delivery boy for the local market. She lives in fear of her employer, more particularly in fear of his influence over her daughter. Strange people gather periodically at the Storm residence. They are expected this very evening. As our first act ended, Ellie stood by the window of Adrian Storm's bedroom. What do you see? What? Just Larry going down the path. Ah, Larry. And would you like to see Larry jump two feet in the air and scream out loud as though in pain? Let me focus my will. Let me project onto him. When he reaches the end of the privet hedge, he will spring two feet in the air and scream. knocked on the door, and Ellie opened it, and I gave her the cat, and Mr. Storm said thanks. That's and all. I, I tried to ask Ellie for a date, but she didn't want to talk to me right then. Did you get a good look at Mr. Storm when you took the cat up? Well, I saw him. He was uh, standing in front of that big mirror. That mirror. He stands in front of it all the time. Worse than any woman. He kisses himself, practically. That's not true, Mother. Oh, Ellie. You shouldn't say such things about Adrian. Oh, hello, Ellie. I came down to get a chair. He wants it. Well, uh, aren't you going to say hello to Larry? I said hello to him before. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to say... Yeah, that... they, it's all right, Mrs. Long. Uh... Do you know what happened to Larry just now? While you were passing the time of day with Mr. Adrian Storm? I know. You know. Did you see him? Did you hear him? There, uh... <clears throat> there were, there's a snake out there under the hedge. There are no snakes out there. Well, I'm almost positive. There are no snakes out there. Mother, I want to take one of these kitchen chairs. Well, I'm sure I saw a snake. I'll take this one. I'll I'll prove it to you. I'm going to go out there right now and find it. And and when I find it, I'll kill it and I'll bring it back here. You can see for yourself. There are no snakes out there. There could be. No, there could be one. There are no snakes out there. Then what made Larry jump like that and scream like that? It was Adrian. Adrian did it. By the force and power of his will. His concentrated will. Are you losing your mind? Has that man hypnotized you? Is it all right if I take this chair? Oh, anything. Just take anything. Adrian says he needs it. Well, he's got plenty of chairs in his room. He wants a straight chair. Go ahead. Take it. It's his chair. Mother. Yes, baby. Is... Ellie, my real name? Well, of course it is. Why? I thought maybe it was really Eleonora or Elfreda or Ellie. It's Ellie. That's what you were christened. No, all right. I'll take the chair up. You want some help? No, it's easy to carry. Ellie, baby. Yes? Are you sure you're all right? Of course I'm all right. Well, I, I just thought... I'm all right. And I'm going to be better. Much better. Wait and see. Yes. Oh, maybe, maybe you don't remember her. Ellie, she's the 
the maid. Here she waits on table. Oh, yes. I, I think I do remember. Well, I, I'm, I'm worried about her. Well, what seems to be the trouble, Mrs. Long? Well, she's been acting so strangely. Well, in what way? Well, probably I shouldn't be talking to you about this. Well, if I can be of some help. Oh, well, Ellie spends a lot of time with Mr. Storm, Doctor. Uh-huh. Well, you see, I, I don't like that to start off with. But there really wasn't much I could do about it. But, well, lately it's been getting worse. Worse? Uh, worse in what way? Well, it started about the time she took a big mirror up to his room. When was that? Well, about a month ago. You said... You said a month ago? Yes. See, he keeps this, this mirror in his room and he... Uh, uh, Mrs. He... Long, uh, I have a waiting room full of patients. Oh, I... I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, and I'm going to be jammed up here for the rest of the day. Uh, why don't I come to the house before dinner, uh, say about uh, five? Uh, we, we can have a talk. Would that be satisfactory? Oh, oh that would be wonderful, Dr. Arnold. Are you all right, my dear? Yes. Uh, can uh, I help you with the chair? No, it's all right. I can do it. Uh, bring it right inside. That's it. Oh, it's not so very big. Where do you want it? Uh, right in front of the mirror. Um, about here. It's just a chair out of the kitchen. I know. It's not very comfortable. Uh, I know that, too. You have all these nice upholstered chairs. I, I, I don't see why you wanted this one. One day you'll understand. One day soon. What are you going to do with it? Sit in it. Like this. That's all? Uh, not quite. Uh, where is Mephisto? Under the bed, I think. Ah, will you fetch him for me, please? His tail is sticking out, but I... Oh, I think I've got him. I have. Ah, bring him to me. All right. Pretty boy. Ah, oh, handsome boy. Do you want anything else? No, I think I have everything. Oh, then maybe I'd better go. Mother would. Yes, stay a moment. Well. Uh, have you been doing your exercise? My name is Ellie Long, and I am here right now. My name is Adrian. Yes, my dear. I asked my mother, is my name really Ellie? And she said yes. Oh, pretty name. You think so? You don't care for it? Well. <laughs> then I shall give you another name. Could you do that? Why not? What name did you have in mind for me? Claymer. <laughs> you like it? Claymer. By strength, don't you think so? Flamer. Powerful. Oh, I have something I want to do. Can I help you? Uh, come over here. Stand next to me. Uh, a little in back of me, if you please. Here? Yes. Just there. Now, please don't move. Please don't interrupt. Just stand there. Watch what? What is about to take place. Anyway, what I expect to take place. I've been working on this for a month now. Does it, uh, does it have something to do with a mirror? Clever girl. Since I am sitting directly in front of the mirror, you might assume it has to do with the mirror. <laughs> ah, incidentally, I can tell you now why I wanted this straight chair. Yes, I, I wonder. I have been practicing this exercise for a month now using one of those armchairs. I have concluded they're too comfortable. My concentration wavers. My mind goes to other things. But in this straight back chair, sit still, Mephisto. Be quiet. I can feel all I 
want to feel. I can know all I want to know. I can do all I want to do. I can be all I want to be. time and energy to dissipate his own reflection in a mirror, why would he go to such lengths to procure the right mirror, the right chair, place the chair before the mirror, and, in effect, try to exorcise his own image? Why this particular man tried to do this particular thing, we shall learn when I bring you Act Three in just a few moments. Ellie watched Adrian as he worked his magic on the innocent person of Larry, the delivery boy, seemingly forcing the boy to leap into the air and scream. Ellie's insistence that only the power of Adrian's will had caused Larry to leap and scream sent her mother to the phone to call Dr. Arnold, who promised to visit the house at 5 o'clock. It is now evening of the same day. You make the salad dressing, will you? You're awfully good with salad dressing. Ellie? You all right? Huh? You, you look pale and you're, you're acting so fidgety. I'm all right. Your hands are shaking. No, they're not. Ellie, I might as well tell you. I called Dr. Arnold. Who is Dr. Arnold? Mr. Storm's doctor. What did you do that for? Adrian's all right? It's not him I'm worried about. It's you. Oh, there's the doctor now. I don't want to see him, but I want you to. Well, I'm not going to. There's nothing wrong with me. And anyway, Adrian wants me upstairs. He told me to come back when I was through helping you. Ellie, please stay and see him. I don't want to see any doctor. Oh, Lord. Lord, help me to do the right thing. Help me to, to know what the right thing is. I certainly don't. Mrs. Long? Oh, oh yes. Yes, and, and you're Dr. Arnold. Oh, come in, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm not uh, taking you away from your kitchen, oh, am no, I? Oh, that's all right. Oh, come in here and, and, and sit down, Doctor. All right. It'll be just you and me, I'm afraid. Ellie's... Ellie's with him. Mr. Storm. Well, it's hard for me even to say his name. I know he's your patient and he's your friend, and I, I don't like to say harsh things about him, but, you see, it's got to a point where well, I just... now, now, suppose you tell me just what seems to be the trouble. Well, well, you see, I've been working here for about a year. Ellie works, works here, too, general housework. Mm -hmm. And from the day we came here, I could see that Mr. Storm had his eye on Ellie. Well, in what way? Oh, well, I, I don't mean anything immoral, but in a way that could lead to something immoral, especially because she started to, well, to like him a lot and to spend a lot of time with him. She says they just sit in his room and talk. Well, now it's possible that's all they do. Well, Ellie's not one to lie, but, well, there are these people that started coming to the house nights. Now, now, now they may be perfectly respectable. I wouldn't know that, but on the other hand, 
Well, you want to know what I think? I... I think they're witches. Oh, uh... <laughs> Mrs. Long, I hardly think so. Well, well I... something weird goes on in that room while they're here. Moans and, and groans and something that sounds like... Well, 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 not like hymns, but it's more like... Like chants. Oh, not music, though. Just... Just voices. Chanting. Well, that sounds harmless enough. Well, maybe it is. I, I, I'm not saying it isn't. You see, a, about a month ago, Mr. Storm had Ellie take a big mirror up to his room. Well, sometimes when his door was open, I used to see him in front of the mirror just looking at himself. Sometimes I'd go past his door again, and an hour later, and there he'd be still looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> Mrs. Long... I've known Mr. Storm for a good many years, and while I'm moderately fond of him, I must tell you that I've always known he was the most narcissistic of men. Uh, not an attractive trait, but one which may be forgiven, I think. Well, maybe I... Uh, do go on. Well, see, I, I worried a lot about Ellie being so, so close to Mr. Storm. I wanted to go out more with Larry McCabe. He's our delivery boy from the supermarket. Oh, oh, and I have to tell you what happened this morning. You see, Larry brought some groceries, and when he reached the edge of the privet hedge, he he jumped up in the air and he let out such a yell. You th you think something had bitten him? Well, he said he'd seen a snake. Oh, not that the snake had bitten him, just. Just that he'd seen it. Well, I think seeing a snake unexpectedly would make me jump up in the air and yell. Yes, and, and, and I believed him, kind of. But do you know what Ellie said? Mm hmm She said that it happened because Mr. Storm had made it happen. Really? Well, just how did he make it happen? By the force of his concentrated will. Oh, Mrs. Long, I, I think she was just teasing you, you know, uh, uh, putting you on. Uh... She swears that's what he said. <laughs> Even so. And this afternoon she took a chair up to him, an, an ordinary chair, one from the kitchen. Heavens knows what he wanted it for. She is with him right now, up in his room. You saw it this afternoon, didn't you, my dear? I'm not sure. You saw my reflection begin to fade around the edges, as though it were wasting away. Come now. You saw that. I... I saw something. You saw my reflection start to disintegrate. That is what you saw. Admit it. I... I don't like to. Why not? Why not, for heaven's sake? It's a supreme achievement crowning glory of my life, the great triumph of my career. Have you ever even heard of a man who could make his own reflection disappear? <laughs> Have you? No. Oh, well, then. But why do you want to do it, Adrian? Why? I'll tell you why. Because it can't be done. That's why. I am a I wasn't sure. Well, you know now. Come now. To work, to work. Uh, first, I shall seat myself in this most uncomfortable chair, directly in front of the mirror. Then you will hand me my cat, Mephisto. Here. Lie down, Mephisto, and be quiet. Mm, that's my good boy, my pretty boy. Stand beside me, a little in back of me. Please, as before. That's it. Now, keep your eyes fixed on the mirror, as I shall. And Mephisto, too. We three will watch while I remove, by my own powers, my own image from the mirror. I 
I can know all I want to know. I can be what I want to be. Oh, I am master of Try to tell us what happened. Tell the doctor, Ellie. He's sitting in front of the mirror in the chair I brought him. He's got the cat in his lap. I couldn't stand it. You couldn't stand what, Ellie? Oh, try and tell us, darling. I was supposed to look in the mirror to watch. To watch? To watch what? He said he was going to make it happen. Nobody has ever done it before. Make what happen? Make his reflection disappear. His his reflection in the mirror? Nobody has ever done it, he says. And no one ever will, my dear. Oh, but I watch. And the edges got all blurry. In the mirror. And then it was just some little pieces of him starting to fall off. He was losing parts of himself. It was horrible. Oh. I couldn't stand oh, it. No, 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 darling, darling. You don't believe me, but I saw and I saw it. He was disappearing in the mirror. I had to get out. I couldn't stand it anymore. The pistol, the cat. Something's happened, doctor. I uh, think we'd better go in there. Ellie, come on. I don't want to. Come on, doctor. Yes. He didn't look up or, or anything when we came in. He's dead, Mrs. Long. Dead? He must have died uh, no more than a minute ago. How? What, what killed him? Oh, I didn't expect it so soon. I, I thought he had at least a year, maybe more. What are you talking about, Doctor? Uh, Mr. Storm suffered from a terminal disease. Well, there was little to be done for except relieve his pain, but uh, I told him a month ago he could expect to live at least another year. You told him a month ago? Yes. That was when he asked for the mirror. Yes. There's got to be a connection. I don't like to jump to conclusions, but I think it very likely that what we have here is a case of Suicide. Is that possible? I suppose... I suppose a man could will his own death. What's the matter with Adrian? He's dead, Ellie. Oh. He's dead? Yes. See? 
His reflection is all gone from the mirror. That's what I was afraid of. That it would disappear altogether. And he would be dead. But he wouldn't listen. Oh, uh, Ellie. Look uh... at the mirror. All blank. I can see myself. And mother. And you, Doctor. And oh, Adrian. Ellie, you can see Adrian. Adrian's body in the mirror. No, it's just the chair. Father, you see the chair, don't you? Of course. But no, Adrian. Adrian is gone. Uh, I don't know. Where's Mrs. Sisto? What happened to Mrs. Sisto? Yes. Yeah, well, where's the cat? Mrs. Sisto knew that Adrian was dying. He couldn't stand it either. Oh, he's somewhere in this house, Ellie. We'll, we'll find him. No. No, I, I think he's right here. Right here in this room. Ellie, Ellie, don't worry about the cat. I have to find him. Not now. Mrs. Isso? Where, where are you, Mrs. Isso? Good cat. Pretty boy. He's here. It's uh, best to leave her alone for the time being, Mrs. Law. I suppose so, Doctor. Oh, I found him. I found him. Ellie. He was behind the mirror. Oh, that's fine, darling. Don't you see what's happened? Don't you see? What happened, Ellie? Why, the sister was sitting in Adrian's lap. And the sister knew what was happening. That Adrian's reflection was slipping away. He jumped off Adrian's lap and went into the mirror and took Adrian's Thanks. Early, darling. And now Adrian's soul is in Mephisto. And Adrian will live on in Mephisto forever. I... I have to call the police, Mrs. Long. Of course you do. Dear Mephisto, beautiful cat, you're mine now. I'll never leave you. You will never leave me. Will you, Adrian? Did Adrian Storm commit suicide? That is what we must ask ourselves. Did he bring about his own demise? Did he will himself dead? And if he did, is this magic? Was Adrian Storm a true major? Or is what we witnessed merely the proof of a man's destructive power when that power is turned inward upon himself? I shall be back shortly. We are not consulted, heaven knows, in the matter of our conception. We come into this uncertain world under protest, and we object strenuously to large portions of the life thus thrust upon us. Should we begrudge any man the privilege of determining the moment and the manner of departing it? It's something to think about. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Jada Rowland, Carol Titel, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.